CME Group is launching micro e-mini futures contracts. Discover how a smaller micro e-mini futures contract opens the world to greater trading possibilities. Welcome to Striking Option, the show that reveals the options you have to better navigate markets. I'm Jeff Kilberg and I'm joined today by Scott Bauer. Hey there, Scott. Jeff, how you doing? I'm doing great, even though it's raining here a little bit in Chicago. But it is interesting, Scott. We saw a new all-time high in the S&P 500 last week. We saw healthcare and communications services oddly leave those sectors <laughs> higher. But we have a lot to digest this week. We have Fed speak. We have the jobs number later this Friday. What is getting your attention this week, Scott? Well, you know, with healthcare was great. It was really kind of left out uh, with the ba- thrown out with the baby of the bathwater, and, and it really has rallied back. But you know what? I'm looking at the financials also, which have rallied really nicely during this earnings season. So we got the Fed, we have more earnings, and those two sectors really have, have helped this market to those new highs. I think that's right. We're going to see more earnings this week. I know we have Google. We have a nice cross-section again. But earnings season, by and large, has beat expectations, even though those expectations were lowered, Scott. No, they have been. But you know what? They're better than expected, but the big thing for the market is they're not as bad as some thought. There it is. Yep. All right, pal, let's get this first lightning round. Are you ready? Yes, let's do it. Crude oil retreats. Well, we did see a move higher in crude oil, a lot of geopolitical tension when we saw that hard line talk about no one's going to be allowed to <laughs> buy crude oil from Iran, but now all of a sudden we're seeing a little bit of a pullback. What are your thoughts? Right, geopolitical headlines, risk headlines, but this recent pullback in crude really presents an opportunity. And as an example of a way to approach this opportunity would be by selling a week two, which is the May 10th expiration, 62.60 put spread. And this spread potentially allows an investor to collect $350. Well, it's really interesting. When you were approaching this trade example, we saw the crude oil June futures contract trading around 63.44 with the at the money volatility around 26. But this is range bound. This is a type of trade example we're presenting a range bound as it doesn't seem like these geopolitical tensions really will abate anytime soon, correct? No, not at all. And and that's what's really hope, you know putting in so, uh, support for the oil market here. And this thing does well if the market stays here or just goes up even a little bit. And I like the way you're only going out two weeks on this. They're going to see a lot of moving parts as we continue to see OPEC and non-OPEC members as well as administration approach this crude oil patch. Exactly. All right, great stuff, Scott. And please remember, these are trade examples, not trade recommendations. Let's move into the second lightning round. All right, let's do it. New all-time S&P 500 highs. Well, there it is. We see a continued grind higher. Can we continue to see up until you know, tomorrow is the last day of the month, so we're seeing 18% of the gain the S&P 500. Are we going to see a 56% year-to-date gain the S&P 500, Scott? I don't think anybody really thinks that. However, things are in place here. Like we just talked about, earnings are better than expected. The Fed seems to be in place here. And, and geopolitical risks, for the most part, have abated a little bit. And even though I came at you with a snarky question, <laughs> I actually do believe that the market does have the ability to move to the upside. And the trade example I want to talk about today, Scott, is how to utilize options on futures to mitigate that risk to the upside. We don't really talk about the risk to the upside of a melt up, but here I want to buy at end of the month. This is going to take me all the way to May 31st. I'm buying the 3,000, yes, I said 3,000 call, and I'm selling the 3,200 call in the e mini S&P 500. This will cost about $570. Pretty expensive to see the market move higher, correct? Well, that's really what it's all about is reward to risk. And, and with volatility, volatility suppressed where it is, it's a very inexpensive way to be in the market on a grind higher. And we're seeing when I, this trade example was priced out, we saw the E-mini S&P 500 futures trading around 29.48, and that the money vol was 10, very low. So typically, when you see it at the money vol this low, this is an, an inexpensive way to buy a call spread. Exactly, and that, that's really the key to this. And like you said, Jeff, this melt up, if it continues, this has the possibility to really take advantage of that. And even if you don't believe that the markets move higher, by utilizing options in the future, this can allow you to capture that move higher, even if you do have a raised eyebrow like myself, Scott. <laughs> no doubt about it. All right, Scott. Well, thanks as always for hopping on Striking Options. We want to make sure you tune in every week as we will continue to strike options.